Hello, my name is Eric and welcome to my course on computational science. Uh, this is where we're going to get started with the Python IDE. And we're going to use um, the Python IDE to, to write our first program. So to get started with Python, uh, first we need to download the software. Uh, and to get the software, I'd recommend going to python.org, especially if you're on a Windows computer, which I suspect most, pe most people are. Now, I use a Mac, so I, I'm not as familiar with the Windows program or with how it works on Windows, but I, it's pretty similar on most everything. Now, we're working with Python 3.5, so I'd recommend they download Python 3.5. 2.7 is really just there uh, for, for maintaining older software. Uh, if you are on a Linux or a Macintosh machine, you may want to use a package management software. I personally use something called Mac Ports. I think it does a great job of managing the different packages. Um, there, there are some really good package managers out there, so just do a little research into it or ask me about it, and I'll do my best to help you with those. Uh, find what you need. All right. Um, so quickly, I want to look at the interactive terminal. And from the terminal, if you just type Python, once Python is installed, it will lead to the Python program you're running. Here at the top it says Python 3.5.1, that's my version. To test it's working, I can type print parentheses. This is my program, because that's what my program says. Uh, when you type the print statement, it'll print it right back to you. Now you do need the parentheses. In Python 3.5, the parentheses after print are required. A lot of Python code you might see online won't have the parentheses, and that means it was probably written for Python 2 or 2.7. Uh, in Python 2.0 or 2.7, you don't need the parentheses, uh, but you can use the parentheses. So I always recommend that people use the parentheses when they're doing their print statements. It, if you're, it won't cause problems, and if you're having problems, it's something other than the parentheses. All right, so uh, our Python is working. We can print one plus one. Okay, math is working. We're all happy. Uh, when we exit out of Python, it'll be done. So this is how Python works in the terminal. Now in this directory, I happen to have a file called program.pi. Now if we look at this program, it's going to do, it's going to print hello Python, print one plus one, 500 plus 500, and 500 to the fifth power. Now, if we want to run a program in the terminal, we can type python program.py. And instead of bringing us to the interactive shell, uh, when we put the program.py after it, uh, Python sees the .py and says, hey, that's a Python program. And it executes every line, one after the other. And that's exactly what we see. So that's one way we can kind of reuse our work without having to type everything every time we go to the terminal. But I normally want to use something to help organize my work. And we use full integrated development environment so that we have a way to organize our code and do more sophisticated operations. So what I work with is something called PyCharm. Uh, PyCharm is a very professional IDE for Python, and I think it works brilliantly. Um, and they're drilling right above me, so I hope that's not too loud for you guys. So with the PyCharm IDE, you can download a free version of it, or if you're a student, you can get it for free as a student and get the full professional version. All right, I've already loaded up a project here. Um, and in this project, actually, you know what? I'm going to just do a new project from scratch. So using the PyCharm, we'll just create a new project. I'll call this IDE Play, and it's going to use the Python 3.5, so everything should be pretty straightforward. Now, one disadvantage to, to the IDE is it's going to take a while to kind of link and put everything together. Um, so at the bottom, you'll start to see some bars going over, and that's just sort of the IDE figuring out where everything is. It's looking through all the different... Um, packages and figuring out what keywords it has to pay attention to. All right, so we're going to start and we're going to create a new Python file. So under this folder, we're going to right click, go to new Python file. I'm just going to call it my program. 
Now the IDE knows, hey, it's a Python program, so we're going to put the .py. Now I'm going to say print. This is a cool program. Put some exclamation points there, maybe a couple ones so people know we're cool. I can also do something like print one plus one. Print uh, five times five times five. Print five to the fifth power, or third power, how about? Then these two lines should be the same. What is two to the 100th power? We'll figure out what that is. So we can put all these different things in. Uh, when we're done, we can do control S to save, or it should automatically save it when you go to run your program. Uh, once everything has loaded at the bottom, and it will take a long time the first time you load PyCharm. But once it's loaded, you can right click on your program and go down to run. And it's going to run your currently open uh, file. At the bottom, we can see the terminal output. So we're not in a terminal, but we can see the output to a terminal. And if we want to make a change, like let's say we want to, oh, what's 2 to the, let's try 200 power. Instead of right clicking here a second time, we can just click the green arrow at the top and it'll just keep rerunning. And we can say, okay, can we go to 1,000? And that's basically how the IDE is going to work. So this is just a quick introduction to the IDE. I'm not really showing how to install it. I think it's pretty self-explanatory. It can be difficult to link the IDE to your Python interpreter. Uh, and I may do a video related to that.